Hey guys, I am back with part three of my four part video series sharing my final thoughts on the 2017 18 uh, season's NHL jerseys and all of the uniforms unveiled during that season. So, before I go on at all any further, uh, and this video I will be discussing the Metropolitan Division uniforms unveiled that year. Um, I want to quickly show you guys a jersey that I did not show in my last video, and that is the St. Louis Blues current away uniform. Personally, this, in my opinion, is a fantastic jersey and uniform as a whole. Um, I feel that it's a wonderful mix of royal blue and navy blue. Even in the Addy Zero jersey cut, the collar looks great, the shoulders look great, and the jersey as a whole, in my opinion, is really quite pleasant on the eyes. As for the home uniform, that I certainly don't have never felt the same way about. Um, number one, uh, I absolutely cannot stand the fact that the blue switched to white numbers. Now, I know some people do prefer the white numbers, and if you do, I totally respect your opinion, but I felt that the bright golden yellow numbers really helped add some extra contrast to this uniform. Now, for a modern uniform that is very heavy on navy blue, do I think it's a bad uniform? Not at all. But I will say this though, I have been hoping for a long time that the blues would eventually lose the navy blue shoulder yoke because I feel that it makes this uniform a bit too dark and I feel that actually without the shoulder yoke it would make the uniform a lot brighter. Um, even a bright yellow shoulder yoke would look good, but I will be honest, I think my favorite jersey between their home jersey, as you see here, and their third jersey is the third jersey. Even though I would instantly switch out the beige for uh, actual white. So you look at this uniform here, and then you look at this one here. I love how bright that beautiful hue of blue is with the white, or in this case, vintage white and athletic gold accents and bright golden yellow numbers and nameplates on the back. This uniform is bright and it's colorful and I find it very pleasant. The other one I feel is a bit too dark, but I will discuss this jersey in much further detail um, in, in future videos because I want to share my final thoughts for the 2018-19 season uniforms. Plus, I do want to share my thoughts on their... Um, obviously their new alternate uniform. But before I go on any further, and this video I will be covering the Metropolitan Division jerseys uh, for this video today. But before I go on any further, I want to do a little bit of, um, a little bit of some uh, catching up, or what's the proper, what's the proper term I'm looking for here? Sorry guys, I'm having a, drawing a blank here. Um, there's some there's some teams uniforms I want to quickly touch base on again before I move on any further. Um, number one regarding the um, Colorado Avalanche. Uh, for me, and just bear with me for a moment here. Uh, with the Colorado Avalanche, um, I'll give you a quick shot of their uniform here. Um, even though I think their home uniform is basically excellent, except for the fact that I think that the uh, numbers on the arms and especially on the back could use an extra outline. The only reason I say that for the arms is to help it match and not look, make it look mismatched compared to the numbers on the back of the jerseys. But I think on both the home and away jerseys, they need an extra slate blue outline on the numbers between the white and black uh, main base of the numbers on the home and away jerseys respectively and the silver trim on each of those teams or sorry those jerseys numbers um, I think that would be some much needed contrast and I think it would also help uh, make the silver stand out either that or have the blue just past the silver but um, also something else I want to mention I got to be honest I actually have felt for a long time that Colorado could do some really great uniforms too if they went a little bit more in the direction of the Latvian uh, national hockey teams, whether it's their World Juniors or their World Hockey Championship teams. 
Um, I really love how Latvia has used burgundy, black, white, and silver. Now, would I want the Avalanche to get rid of the blue? Absolutely not. And it looks great on the burgundy jersey. But something with the slate blue still, but a little bit more black and white. I think maybe something like that could be a great future idea for the Avalanche too. Perhaps a future third jersey? I don't know. I just... Something I was thinking about that I wanted to mention, but once again, I don't, for me, their new uniforms are decent. I, I actually like their home uniform, but I will say this. I don't like how mismatched I feel they are. I don't like how the away jersey is so sorely lacking in blue and has so much blue on the socks, but basically has very little to none on the jersey itself. The only blue that you get on the jerseys from the back half of the collar and the blue trim on the numbers, on the arms, and of course the um, blue on the logo. And to me that's not enough. There should be some blue somewhere on the jersey, even between the burgundy and the silver, but then it won't match the home uniform because it's just burgundy with a bit of silver uh, trim and then the blue on the arms. And that's, once again, that's something I've never liked about the Avs uniforms is that their home and away jerseys have never truly matched. Now, and even, well, actually, they used to match before, but on the home, or sorry, on the burgundy jersey, I didn't like how there was black accents on it. It looks better without the black, but on the away uniform, if you add the blue, it doesn't match with the home uniform design anymore. So it's, it's one of those cases where I feel the home jersey would be a better served as a great, would be an excellent alternate uniform and not the best basis for a new um, home and away jersey set, at least in my opinion. Um, also, moving on to the, um, I want to quickly touch base on the um, stars. I actually would love to see what, what their home uniform would look like if it had a white shoulder yoke like their 2020 Winter Classic sweater has. I actually think that that would help brighten the victory green up considerably, and I think that would work good too, perhaps. Um, but there's a little bit more I want to discuss about the Minnesota Wild for a second because I said in my last video... And there's, it's not just the wild, but I want to talk about it in general. I did say in my last video that I feel that waist striping is what makes, what helps make a, a proper jersey design. Uh, it depends on the uniform. I mean, I've seen some great jerseys with a chest stripe on the front that don't have any waist striping and they look excellent. Like, for example, um, Team Canada's 2004 um, retro Winnipeg Falcons throwback sweater that they wore. Um, also, another example, in my opinion, is the Chicago Blackhawks 2009 Winter Classic sweater. It had no waist striping of any kind. It just had the chest striping. And I've always loved that uniform. So for me, it depends on the design. And I wish I would have actually said that in my last video rather than correcting myself here eight minutes into this video. But I'd rather say it here than not say it at all. Uh, in the Wilds case... I'm not fully against half-finished chest striping either, by the way. Um, there are some uniforms out there that look good with the half-finished chest stripe that doesn't go all the way around. And by the way, that, that style has been around for basically 100 plus years now. So, and I'm talking about a half-finished chest stripe that doesn't go all the way around the back like Montreal's home jersey does. Now, in the Wilds case, I think it would look better if the beige chest stripe went all the way around the jersey. But a half-finished chest stripe in that case, it's just not my favorite design for the Wild. It's, ju it's just not. I think I would have rather seen the Wild take their arm striping and just use that as waist striping without a chest stripe on the front. I think that would have looked better, too. Um, but yeah, no, I wanted, to, I wanted to address that real quick because I listened to that in my video. And I'm like, wait a second, that's not, that's not always the way that I think. So I wanted to correct myself on that before I move on any further. Now, also... Uh, with the Nashville Predators, um, I do want to give a shout out to my subscriber, the Weed is Heat 96, for the, being the one who mentioned the idea of the Predators maybe having have or should have or what the Predators should have done when they launched their current home jersey in the first place. So 
it, he was the one who suggested in one of the comment sections on my videos, um, past videos, that they should have just added a matching shoulder yoke to their home jersey to match their new away jersey. And I totally agree. That is a small, that it would be a relatively, it'd be a significant change that would offer a significant improvement. But there's something else I've been kicking myself for since I filmed my last video that I want to mention here too. I wish that Nashville would just bring back their old navy blue third jersey from nine years ago and bring out the white matching away jersey that they or prototype jersey that they actually were planning on switching to full time and go with that with a bright golden yellow third jersey for Nashville. That is what I think I'd like to see. Or better yet or better yet have Nashville wear gold on the road and wear navy blue at home and have a white alternate jersey and then when they make the playoffs or if they make the playoffs or whenever they make the playoffs which I'm sure they will this year anyway but and they've been a great team for quite a while now but Nashville could even wear gold at home in the playoffs and wear their white alternate on the road during the playoffs. I mean, I just think that Nashville's new jerseys are too plain. I mean, I love the bright gold shoulder yoke on their away jersey. I think that's really cool and it looks good, but the arms and the waist are so, and the jersey itself is just too damn plain. And back to the Jets, something else I want to mention too there. Um... In terms of their uniforms, uh, for the fact that they had such a short timeline to make their uniforms when they relocated from Atlanta back in 2011, they did a great job. But with their away uniform, um, for me, I find I don't really totally care for the arm stripes and how they go over the navy blue striping along the top of the arms and the shoulder yoke down to the arm or to the cuffs of the arms, to down to the gloves on the uniform. Um, that part, even as I say that though, uh, the uniform still looks good overall. I've never disliked it, but I think that if they did take all of the navy blue off of the arms and left it as a shoulder yoke only, I actually do feel that that would be a really potentially an upgrade and their home Jersey, they just need to fix that stupid collar and make the collar insert on their away Jersey, uh, navy blue. And once again, with the blues numbers, on their home jersey. I hate how they're now white. And if you like it in white better than yellow, I respect your opinion, but I just, I felt that the bright athletic gold numbers, which is the proper term for what I've been told for yellow in sports, I, you know, I just feel that um, the bright athletic gold numbers looked better and still look better than the white ones. So finally, I'm sorry for taking so long to start talking about the Metropolitan Division teams, but Let's talk about the Carolina Hurricanes. So this jersey was a monumental improvement over what it replaced, but I still don't like how hidden and faded the Storm Squares are. I wish that the Storm Squares would be prominent again. Now, I noticed that the striping of this uniform was designed, was heavily inspired by the Hartford Whalers, and that's not a bad thing. Um, the collar I wish was solid black. I, I wish that they would have made it solid black, but... You know, there's a part of me that would like to see the Hurricanes maybe try something new. Uh, and I gotta be honest, I still think their old third jersey with the one Storm Square is the best jersey the Hurricanes have ever had. I still think they should have gone to that full time with a matching away. And they, I think they could have even snuck in a second Storm Square to that logo and it would have been fine. But this uniform here is definitely not bad and it never has been. Now as for their now former away jersey and remember folks I'm talking about the 2017-18 season so obviously that's why you're not going to see me discussing their new away jersey with the Canes word mark so this jersey here truth is I never disliked it I mean I think the decision with the white insert on the collar sucked but besides that I've there's been something about this uniform that I've always liked but here's the problem it, to me, has never, even though I've always liked this uniform, and truth is, I think I still overall prefer this jersey over their new away jersey, to be honest. I, I gotta say this, though. This has never, to me, been a proper Hurricanes jersey. There's no Storm Square striping around the waist at all. I mean, I actually think they could have redone the away jersey just to make the waist striping match the home jersey and have Storm Square striping in that, and I think that would have been an improvement. 
Even the shoulder yoke that extends to um, swallow up the nameplates on the back of the player's jerseys, I didn't even mind that. I thought that was actually kind of unique. But this jersey here, I like it for being simple. I, I've always felt that this, this away uniform was never a bad choice for Carolina, but here's the problem. Carolina is just another red and black team without the Storm Square striping. And that is, to me, an important part of their identity. And I'm so glad that their new away jersey has brought that back. Because, to me, I feel that that was something that they should have never got rid of in the first place. So, there's part of me that misses this jersey and has always liked it. But, it to me, has never been a proper Hurricanes jersey. It's sorely lacking in that one special element that allows Carolina to stand apart from the rest of the NHL, and it's the Storm Square striping, which I'm happy to report their new away jersey actually has, and this one does not. Now, if they would have added it to this one, I think this one would have been definitely better. And since they're faded anyway, I don't know why they didn't add them. But I know that their new owner is not a fan of these, and that's why he got rid of them, but they're still... I, I'm kind of, I'm not sure what to think because I still think I like this one just a bit better. Now moving on to Columbus. Um, I got to be honest, I'm really tired of the Blue Jackets sticking with the status quo. I really would like to see them try something new or change their jersey design or try a new uniform with a Civil War soldier on it. I mean... The color insert on here should have been navy blue. That's easy. But I feel like the Blue Jackets took some of the little things that made their Reebok era uniforms good and have taken some of the things that gave these jerseys a little bit more uh, color and a little bit more of a much needed contrast, especially on the collar. With Reebok before, they had the white and the red on the collar. I thought that was especially good on the home jersey. And I also don't like, I. by the way, I should say this. The new sock striping on the away jersey works because it matches this. And even though you could argue it works because it matches the home jerseys piping along the arms up to the chest and the collar, these stripes here are far too thin. Even though the Reebok era socks were not perfect, they were a good complement to this uniform because those big, thick, white stripes on the socks, in my opinion, gave this simple, relatively boring uniform much-needed contrast. Now, they could have even made this part of the arm here black on their home jersey, like they had when it was their first third jersey design ever, back in the early to mid-2000s. I think that would have added some much-needed creativity and some much needed um, pizzazz to their home jersey. But even though I've always liked their current away jersey design, I just feel these are too plain. I'd love to see Columbus do something new. I love their Canon third jersey, but I feel it's long overdue for Columbus to give us something new. And I'm really disappointed that they haven't done that yet. Now, as I say that though, I still think their third jersey is awesome. And by the way, their new number and letter font um, it's grown on me since it came out, but I still, I still think I prefer the old font, believe it or not. And I don't think everybody agrees with me, or most people agree with me on that, period. But you see this jersey here. You see the socks? If this part on the arms was black, and here I better put my phone closer up here so you can actually see what I'm trying to show you. If you can. I apologize if my uh, phone's quality is not the greatest. Um, but... This part here, if it was black, if they had the black on the inside of these pairs of stripes on the socks, see, that to me could be doable. I'm not saying it would be a great idea. I still think the old Reebok socks were way better. This, to me, is far too plain, eh? But you know what? If they would have gone with black on the inside of the piping, like they had on their very first third jersey in franchise history... That, to me, with black inside of here instead of just being navy blue like the main color of the socks, that, to me, would provide enough contrast that that could have even worked. 
But this to me is far too plain, it's far too simple, and I gotta be honest, I've never cared for Columbus's uh, home uniform that they've had since basically 2007. And even with the tweaks, it's still basically the same uniform, even though it's had some tweaks obviously done as you can see here with the socks. So, anyways, I you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do uh, something that I feel I should do real quick. and. I want to show you guys the Blue Jackets old socks, just so you guys can see what I'm trying to get at here. And, you know, if all you hear right now is clicking of my uh, keys on my computer, I, I apologize. But here, I think you guys will now have a better chance to see what I've been trying to mention. Now, their away jersey socks, I think, are totally fine. But you see the collar, too. Notice how there's a bright white on the collar and bright white stripes on the socks. This, to me, gave this uniform some much-needed contrast. Now it's become too drab. And even though I've, I've never been a lover of this either, at least this had a little more color to it. To, now, now, in my opinion, it's become a bit too drab. And it's unfortunate. And, you know, I would really like to actually see the Blue Jackets get some new uniforms at some point. And I think they could really use some, eh? But here's the sock striping on the away jersey. Um, even though, to be honest, I think I still prefer the Reebok era striping on the away jersey as well. This works. And as I say that, though, the red on the socks should be a bit thicker, though. And, you know, I got to be honest, when it comes to uniforms, if you haven't been able to tell already, I know I can be rather picky, but I'm picky because I see these little things and I think that the teams could do a lot better. So, actually, why don't I take a little bit more time to show the Blue Jackets again, because I want to show you guys the old away socks. See... Even though I think their new socks are fine and dandy, and I know I'm going on quite a bit about the socks, I know. But here's the thing, I want to talk about it because the new socks, in my opinion, are too dark. Even though that I do like the idea of them matching the main arm component of the jersey, which I've, this, their away jersey, I've never disliked. But see the old socks, they provided more color, especially on the home jersey. But anyways, I mean... I love the Canon third jersey, but I honestly feel it is long overdue for the Columbus Blue Jackets to go with something new. I think it's time. I would really like to see Columbus go back to the drawing board and do something new, either with the Canon or with the Civil War soldier as their logo. So now the next team on my uh, list here, and for anybody wondering, I, I have the, when I made this uh, folder in my computer a couple of years ago, I put the Metro and the Atlantic Division teams in the exact same folder. So I just got to quickly go through these Atlantic Division teams. So now let's go to a team that I will really, really rip apart and rant about in this video. The New Jersey Devils. Why? Because I think their New Jerseys suck. Now you might say, oh, well, Roxilla, they, all they did was take the waist striping off and tweak the arm striping. Well, you're not wrong. But I feel it's too much of a change. I feel that their old uniforms were perfect the way they were. It's This is, to me, a case of change for the stupid sake of change. And you know what? If you added a, if you added a hoodie to this, I mean, to me, this looks like the type, like a sports shirt, like a, a replica shirt rather than a jersey. This, I've seen, I swear I've seen at least one type of hoodie that has this similar type of style. This, to me, looks like a jersey where if you added a hood to it, it would be a good hoodie. Just a good fashion hoodie. This is not a good jersey design. And, you know, the hanger effect, I tip my hat to them for doing that. The green inside the collars for, for a hanger effect, I think it's cool. But all these stupid, stupid, <laughs> I said stupid, my bad. Uh, all these stupid excuses for... The Devils changing their uniforms. I don't give a damn. Their old uniforms were awesome. They were perfect. And they even look at this one. These look half finished. These look like something that you'd expect to have seen in the 2007-2008 season when Reebok took over. Not in 2017 when Adidas is taking over. 
Jesus Christ. See, this is what their uniforms used to look like. I don't give a damn about the red and green era uniforms. These, in my opinion, are by far and away the best uniforms the Devils have ever had. And some of the best uniforms in the entire NHL when they used to wear them. They were plain, they were simple, they were traditional, they were clean, and they were excellent. And if they brought these back and kept their white throwback on top of that as an occasional heritage jersey, everybody and their dog would love that. I know I would. I loved it when they wore these and their red and green throwbacks before. And I was ecstatic when the Devils brought out a white throwback from the early 1990s and the 1980s. That was awesome. But now they've even gotten rid of these? Are you kidding me? They got rid of these, two of the nicest jerseys, in my opinion, in the entire National Hockey League, for this and this. These two half-assed pieces of crap uniforms. Seriously. These are so plain, they look like fashion hoodies. That's how I feel about them. And yes, I hate them. They ruined two of the nicest jerseys in the entire league and got rid of these. For this... And for this, give me a break. I mean, you got to be kidding me. What a boneheaded decision. Whoever thought of this, in my opinion, made a very stupid decision. They clearly don't understand what a great uniform is. And it was right under their bleeping nose because these were right there in front of their faces. And they couldn't see that these were perfect the way they were, clearly. They should have left them alone. These are classics, in my opinion. All those teams that changed uniforms back in 1992, the Devils were the ones that got it right. The teams, other teams like Pittsburgh and Toronto and Hartford, none of those uniforms I ever cared for. I mean, actually, as I say that, the black Pittsburgh wordmark jersey I've always liked, but not replacing their uh, black jersey that they won back-to-back -back cups in in the early 1990s and have thankfully gone back to 20-plus uh, years later. Uh, but my point is, is these uniforms are great. They should have never changed. Now, moving on to the Islanders. Now, I love that they've added a royal blue outline to their logo like they had back in the 80s and 70s, too, as far as I uh, know. That's great. And their jerseys, their home and away jerseys, in my opinion, are perfect. I love them. But here's the thing. For both of the Islanders jerseys, I have two problems. Problem number one is the collars. They, Adidas, oh my goodness, their collars are horrible. In my opinion, their collar style has made it ridiculous, has made their away jersey's collar look ridiculous. I even think that just a royal blue collar with orange piping would have been a better choice. And also, I don't like the warped contoured waist striping. This is a team affected by it. And I hate that warped waist striping that everybody in the NHL, including the Golden Knights, the new kids on the block in the NHL until Seattle comes in in 2021. You know, everybody has this problem now, thanks to Adidas. Waist striping should be straight around. If the, if the hem on the jersey template itself is contoured like Reebok was and the Addy Zero uniforms are, who cares? Make the waist striping straight again. For everybody. But in the Islanders' case, this collar sucks. But now look at their home jersey. Another wonderful, eye-catching uniform that, in my opinion, is gorgeous. But uh, look at that collar. I mean, you could say that the collar insert looks like a tie off of a suit. But you know what their collar honestly reminds me of on their home jerseys? It reminds me of a G-string. Yep, that's how I feel about it, and it's a shame, because in my opinion, the Islanders jersey, everything below the collar is gorgeous. But that collar, woo-wee, that is ugly. And I really, you know, it's a shame, and there's not much the Islanders could really do, in my opinion, to make it better. Would I want to see a full-on orange collar on here? Probably not. I mean, it's probably best if they just went with a royal blue collar with orange piping. But my goodness... I, it's teams like the Islanders and like the Penguins and like the Golden Knights even and the Canucks and the Maple Leafs that 
really, when it comes to Adidas, oh, and Chicago, of course. When it comes to Adidas, their collars really have pissed me off since day one. And actually, let's go back to New Jersey for a second. Even though I cannot stand their new uniforms for the life of me, I will give them credit for one thing. You see that collar there? They clearly know how to do the Addy Zero collars properly. They just clearly have forgotten what makes a uniform great. And they've also clearly forgotten that these are some of the best jerseys in the entire sport of hockey, as far as I'm concerned. And definitely some of the better uniforms in the NHL until they got rid of them. All for the sake of change. But anyways, let's move on. And actually, let's give a quick acknowledgement, rather, to their old Reebok Edge collars. See, folks, that's what a nice collar, a beautiful collar, looks like. This, not so much. I still can't unsee a G-string collar for the Islanders. And to you Islanders fans out there, it kills me to say that because I love your jerseys. I really do. Now, let's move on to New York. Now, back in the Reebok Edge era, the red collar insert looked great. On Adidas, wow, 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 not so much. Eh. Horrible. That big red, ugly Pentagon insert that sticks out like a sore thumb. I'm sorry, what a load of crap. And it's not the Rangers' fault. What they should have done is just gone with a plain royal blue collar with red piping. And this is a thing about Adidas that also really pisses me off too, folks, is that they have, thanks to their stupid collars, I feel like their collars have taken away from the original six teams who, in my opinion, are up there as teams with the best uniforms in the NHL. All the original six teams, in my opinion, have been negatively affected, except for Detroit, by the Addy Zero collars. Look at the Rangers' old Reebok collar. That was perfect. But this one, actually, their away jersey collar doesn't bother me. It's not bad. They did a great job on that one, even though I hate the style. They did a good job. And actually, I think at one point they might have considered a silver piping for their collar when before the 2017-18 season. But I'm glad they did not go with that. But on their home jersey, Adidas has ruined their collar. I mean, I still think that even in the, in the Reebok Edge or era... They could have done the collar a little bit differently to maybe even have white and red on it, possibly, or something. But in the Adidas era, they need to make the insert royal blue and put red piping on it. That would be a lot better. I mean, I love the Rangers home and away uniforms. They are always going to be gorgeous, in my opinion, as long as they never get rid of them. Their current ones are gorgeous. But those, the collar on their home jersey is a real pet peeve of mine. Now, Ottawa's in the Atlantic Division. I will talk about them in a different video. Let's move on to the Flyers. Now, for their home jersey, um, some people have said that they feel like the arms on, this, on their jerseys now look kind of off because of the Addy Zero template. Uh, it's not, it hasn't been a total deal breaker for me, but I do kind of agree. And that's something about the Addy Zero template that also pisses me off too, for anybody who's curious to know. What I don't like about Adidas and their Addy Zero uniforms is that the templates are no longer based on the jerseys. The jerseys are now all based on the template, rather than the templates being based on the jersey designs as they were in the Reebok Edge era. Now, I know that's really picky on my part to be saying something like that, but it's true. You know, before, a team like the Flyers, Reebok would have a separate template for their uniform, and it was great. Now, the collar on their home uniform still looks okay. Um, I don't love their collars anyway because it's the style of the Addy Zero collar, but I feel the Flyers did a good job in the case of their home uniform. Now, as for the away uniform, I don't know what they could have done to make it better. I mean, they could have gone with solid orange for the collar. I guess it could have worked. Maybe it wouldn't. It's, this is probably the best choice they made, though, and the collar stinks. But I've also kind of agree with people that they, their uniforms don't look as good in the Addy Zero era as they did at the end of the Reebok Edge era. And it's not that the jerseys are bad. These jerseys are some of my absolute favorites, by the way. I love that the Flyers went back to their 70s uniforms full time again. I hope they never change them again, which is something the Oilers clearly uh, did not listen to. And yes, I can't stand the Oilers' uh, decision to switch to bright orange and navy blue. But I've said that enough, and I, I'm not going to go on to that any further in this video. But, you know, in the Flyers' case, their jerseys are still great. And, you know, 
it's not their fault that they're stuck with the Addy Zero template, but even though I don't like the collar on the away jersey, there's part of me that thinks that this is probably the best decision they made to go with this collar. Uh, now, moving on to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh going back to these uniforms full-time was something that just made me so happy. But you look at these collars. Do they not look like they have a hoodie attached to them from this angle? I don't know about you guys, but they look like sports hoodies in, in these photos. But with the Penguins, they're another team like the Islanders who are stuck looking kind of weird with those contoured waist stripes. And it's not their fault. Everybody's got this problem now. And thank you, Adidas. And by the way, I'm being sarcastic. But, you know, with the Penguins jerseys, I was recently watching a game between the Penguins and the Canucks. And I thought to myself, you know what would have been great? If they would have just made the entire collar solid black. That with maybe even white piping or just solid black. I think that would be a good move here. And if they made this jersey solid Pittsburgh gold for the collar, I think that too would be a good choice as well. They could even make the collar solid black with the Pittsburgh gold piping still there. And I think even that would potentially be a bit of an improvement. But in the Penguins' case, I think they should switch to having full-colored collars on both of their home and away jerseys. And that's something about their new third jersey that I really like, is that they knew how to do the collar on that jersey properly by going with solid black. Why don't they do solid collars for their home and away jerseys? Or better yet, how about Adidas creates a new collar that fixes this mess? That would be even better. And there's a close-up. And another thing about Adidas, those dimpled shoulders. Never, that has never been something that I've cared for. Now, Tampa Bay is not in the Metropolitan Division. Neither is good old Toronto. Or as Don Cherry would say, Toronto. But let's move on to the Capitals. Now, this is another team like Columbus and like the Los Angeles Kings who are stuck having their uniforms slightly downgraded because of the template. Now, for a team that went with a Reebok Edge template, this is one of the, maybe the best, in my opinion, I've always felt this is the best Edge template uniform that I've seen. The colors work. Now, I, I still think the Capitals could go full-time retro, and that would be amazing. But now that they've won a Stanley Cup wearing this white jersey here, I don't know if they will. And I don't know if everybody will agree with me on full-time retro, but I love their throwbacks. But, you know, these uniforms, since they've recently won a cup in them, actually coincidentally in the 2017-18 season, defeating the Vegas Golden Knights, which is pretty incredible that uh, the Golden Knights made the finals in their first ever season as a team. Very impressive. But... Um, I'd love to still see the Capitals go full-time retro, but they're not going to change anytime soon. But I will say this, though. I would love if they, at some point, made their throwbacks a heritage status uniform to wear three or four times a season and brought in a new navy blue alternate with the Weagle on the front. I think that would be cool. And then after two or three seasons, retire that and make the throwback a full-time third again, or better yet, go to it full-time. But these uniforms here, for a very modern style, I've never fully disliked them, but I still think the retro jerseys are far superior. At least in my opinion, I don't know about the rest of you. Now, thankfully, Chicago's collar in this case is gone like the dinosaurs. Whew, what an ugly collar. Reminds me of a toilet seat. Uh, Boston is obviously in the Atlantic Division, and boy, I look forward to ranting about them and Buffalo. So, I've covered Carolina. I've also covered... The um, Flyers, the Rangers, the Islanders. So I covered the Capitals, I've covered the Islanders, I've covered Pittsburgh, I've covered Carolina, I've also covered the Flyers, I've covered the Rangers, I've covered the Blue Jackets, and I've covered the Devils. So, is there another little surprise I have? Okay, these are both Atlantic... Okay, well, since the winter... Or, sorry, stadium series from this season included a Metropolitan Division team called the Washington Capitals... I will quickly end this video by talking about these Stadium Series uniforms that, by the way, I still have intentions to do an actual full-fledged video discussing both of these uniforms in far more detail. But Washington's uniform, you look at that big chunk of red on the bottom. That's not even waist striping. I call it a waist block, and that this caps word mark. This jersey, I love the white shoulder yoke, but the rest of it, it looks like a... A uniform design where they took their USA World Cup 
or Adidas took the USA 2017 or 2016 World Cup of Hockey blue jersey, added a shoulder yoke, added a huge chunk of red, a caps word mark on it, and said good enough. And oh, and a white shoulder yoke for good measure. But the uniform itself, I mean, Washington is a few tweaks away, in my opinion, from having a potentially awesome third jersey. And it would have been way better if they put that damn weagle on the front, or even this modernized uh, take on their 2015 Winter Classic logo on the pant shell. That was a really good logo as well. And it's too bad that wasn't even on the front. Instead, they put the stupid caps abbreviated nickname wordmark on the front. I hate when teams do that. Now, Toronto's here. I mean, since I'm on the topic, and I will talk about the Maple Leafs, obviously, in more detail in my next video, eh? But Toronto Stadium Series uniform, um, I would prefer if the Seaman, anything to do with Seaman, would either stay in the Navy or stay in the classroom, if you get my drift, and keep it off the ice. Um, I applaud the Maple Leafs for doing their military-inspired uniform for the Stadium Series. And by the way, the jersey itself does look good, really good for a Stadium Series uniform, but... Goodness me, folks, the all-white Stormtrooper look is not a good look for hockey. And by the way, I don't even like it for football. Unless there's contrasting socks, then it's excellent. But I hate it when teams like the New Orleans Saints, and I know I'm getting off topic, I hate it when they wear monochrome white with white jerseys, white leotards now, and white socks and shoes. That's an ugly look. You need contrasting elements. If the Maple Leafs had blue pants here instead of the white ones, this uniform, in my opinion, would have been a perfect stadium series uniform. And, of course, if they put the shoulder numbers in between the pairs of blue stripes on the arms. But anyways, you guys, after 41 and a half minutes, that's part three. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you've stuck around and stuck through to the end. But anyways, folks, on that note, I'm going to call it a wrap. And until I'm back with part four to finish this series off with the Atlantic Division, take care, folks. And of course, as always, you guys, bye for now.